And we are back. Welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show. We are here with Judge Rick Schwartz. He is running for appellate court. Now, remember, folks, we got a crazy election cycle going on because of COVID. We're not going to get to do this voting that would have been in the spring until July. There's going to be, as mentioned to me beforehand, some uh, interesting early voting uh, things going on. Going to have a few extra Saturdays to go through that. But today we want to get to know the man who is running for appellate court. So uh, I'm going to let you jump in. I almost got in under 30 seconds. I tried to do that. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your name, family, experience. Roll with it. Good afternoon. I am uh, a judge in the 22nd JDC. Uh, I have been a judge for 12 years. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio. I grew up in Ohio until I was in a junior in high school. We moved to New Orleans, and I went to high school at Abramson High School in New Orleans for my last two years of high school. At that point, my parents moved to Slidell, Louisiana. So I've lived in Slidell, Louisiana since 1972. From there, I went to UNO, and before I was able to get a degree, I went off to LSU Law School because I got an early admittance into LSU Law School. My wife and I were married before I went to law school, and that was back in 1975. So we are on our 45th year of uh, uh, marriage. Congratulations. Thank you. So I have two children, and um, my daughter lives in East Baton Rouge now, and we have three grandchildren there. I've um, At LSU Law School, I graduated in 1978. When I finished law school, I came back to Slidell and opened up a law practice. So I had a 30-year practice of law before I was elected judge, and that's what I've been doing for the last 12 years. Uh, you know, when you're, I guess, when you're talking about the, those, those things early in your life, you know, what, what made you decide to go into law? Like, what's your thought process as you're sitting there, you know, uh, thinking about, I, I'm, I'm interested in law school. What, I mean, you know, for some people it's, you know, sitting around having a beer with my dad and we decide, I decided that I want to be a lawyer. Uh, you know, for others, it was, I've always wanted to be a lawyer. Tell us a little bit about your mindset. And I mean, I know, you know, it, beginning of your career, it's a very stored career and we're going to get in, more in depth in that with a little bit, but want to hear about what your mindset was going into law at the beginning. Well, maybe I should tell you who I am first. My <laughs> name is Rick Swartz, since I didn't mention that at the beginning. And my wife's name is Charmaine. Uh, what got me to go to law school? I was always a, an avid reader. I always enjoyed uh, political science, actually, and that kind of led me into the to the law area, especially you know constitutional law being part of political science. So my time at UNO, I, I took political science. That was my major pre law, and that's what really generated the interest. Before that, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. But once I got to college, I figured out that being a lawyer would be the thing to do. And I mean, you know, you talked about constitutional law a little bit, but, you know, tell us a little bit about your early years. A lot of people like to hear about that. You know, what was it like young buck lawyer coming right out of school? Well, I wasn't sure where I was going to practice law. In fact, I thought about possibly going to Washington, D.C. and working for the government. I actually went there and visited with different congressmen and the FBI. And then I decided Louisiana was my home. So I came back to Slidell and I uh, went and visited with different lawyers in the Slidell area. I ended up working with a lawyer in Slidell for about one year. Then I left, went on my own, opened up my own office and was hired as an assistant DA. And so I had a law office and I was an assistant DA for about five years in the early 80s. Uh, varied practice of law because I was in a small community. Slidell back then was, uh, you know, Gauze Boulevard, which is a major thoroughfare, partially was Gravel Road back in, in the early uh, late 70s. Um, so the community uh, had maybe 35 lawyers in it, and uh, I was able to practice in all areas, uh, you know, contracts and finance company work and bank work and uh, personal injury work, criminal law work. So I have a very wide range of uh, background as to the type of law work I've done. So, you know, you, you got in and, and very clearly hardworking, 
very clearly somebody who wanted to to be involved, uh, especially in the law community. And, uh, you know, you talked a little bit before you and I sat down about some of the things that you participated in the community. But I want to I want to ask you, you know, it sounds like you were very much into the practice of law. Let's switch mindsets here a little bit. Obviously, you ran for judge. You said you're uh, already on the bench. What made what, what what flipped the switch there? What made you decide, OK, I you know, I've practiced law enough on this side of the bench. I want to move up there. I felt like I had the experience to be a good judge. Um, I enjoy the challenge of solving problems, of coming to the right decision. I, I could see both sides of the cases that I was involved in. So I felt like I had a very balanced approach to uh, that would support my decision making as a judge. So let's talk about that for a second, because I think there you know, there's a lot of people out there when you're voting for a judge, what, what am I voting for? And I think one of the things that you brought up is something I'd like you to touch on is, is experience as a judge, decision making, right? A lot of that is, is what goes into being a judge. Uh, walk us through, uh, I guess, an example when you had to make a decision that you thought was tough, uh, but you worked through it. Tell us a little bit about your process. I mean, you don't have to tell us about the specific case. We just want to hear about it from your perspective in terms of having to make a decision. Well, first, we have rules of evidence. So you have to make sure that the evidence that you hear in the courtroom is, is the, the, the appropriate evidence for the case. And then once you have that testimony or those exhibits presented to you that you feel are admissible in the case, you look research the law, apply the law to that evidence, and that's how you come up with the fair and impartial appropriate decision. And, you know, what, what is that like? That has to be, there has to be some pressure there, I have to imagine. I mean, I guess with experience comes wisdom, and with wisdom, pressure is released. But I would imagine that even, even in some tough circumstances, that, that's got to feel like, you know, you're making a decision, but Sometimes you're holding other people's livelihoods in your hands. I mean, what? tell us a little bit about that. Correct. It is. It, there is a lot of pressure on a judge in, in making a decision. And to make a decision based strictly upon the law and the evidence without any type of bias or prejudice, it is very important that uh, you try to put your personal feelings aside. You don't consider the, the participants involved. You don't take ex parte communications. You make your decision based on what is presented to you in a courtroom and based on the law. And yes, there's pressure. And you sometimes you're going to make a decision that is people don't like. And you feel like you have to make the decision because that's what the, the law and the evidence uh, directs you to do. So let's talk about what you're running for. You're running for the Court of Appeal, appellate court, however you want to put it. You know, from your experience, Let's talk about similarities and differences to what you're currently doing on the bench. First, let's talk about differences. From your experience, what do you feel like are some of the things that uh, you either know or will learn at, should you be elected to this position? Right. The First Circuit Court of Appeal is based in, in Baton Rouge. Uh, the courthouse is located right by the Capitol. The judges there oversee 16 parishes. Those are judges uh, in district courts and city courts throughout those 16 parishes. The Court of Appeal reviews their decisions to make sure that their decisions are in, court, in accordance with the law and the rules of evidence and what was presented in the courtroom. Again, to make sure that everything was done fairly and impartially. The district that I'm running in is seven parishes. So there are three separate districts uh, for the First Circuit Court of Appeal. Our district includes St. Tammany, Washington Parish, Livingston, Anjabahoa, St. Helena, and both of the Felicianas. So that's a large area that you have to, to run in to be elected to the First Circuit Court of Appeal. And it, you know, we're talking about a, a Court of Appeals, but this is still like running for judge. It's still a campaign. What's it like? It, I, I remember you said it's been about 12 years since you run a campaign, what's it like to get back on the trail, especially uh, in this interesting theater that we have because of COVID? It, it has been a very interesting campaign. A lot of things have gone on 
for the first few months of this year. I thought this election would be over, over on April 4th. We thought it would be a short campaign beginning on, at the beginning of January through the beginning of April. Well, here we are into June, and the election will be July 11th. We have to deal with COVID. We've also had to deal with, just recently, a, a, a tropical storm, a lot of turmoil in this country. It's very uh, been a very interesting time uh, to be involved in a campaign. But I'm back on the campaign trail. I'm meeting with people. I'm enjoying the response I'm getting from people, and I'm also enjoying talking to the people throughout my district about what they feel are current issues and how they feel about the judicial system. And so, you know, let's let's take that for a second, because you've been on the bench, you've been a judge, uh, you're kind of going to, I guess you can say, a, a higher position in the judicial system. What are some of the things that you find that you are talking to people about on the campaign trail? What are some specific questions? Or are they just kind of saying, this is how I feel about the judicial system? It, it's a lot about... Uh, transparency. And, and that's been a big issue with the judicial system over the last uh, couple of years, you know, about people wanting to get a fair judge to decide their case where they don't have anybody influencing the judge to make improper decisions, where they want the, the decision, the decision to be made uh, without, you know, bias, prejudice, and based on the law and the evidence. And that's what I think I can bring to the bench. I have that transparency. My life is an open book. I'm willing to let everybody look at it, and I will not be hiding anything from anyone. Well, let's talk about that for a second, because, you know, there's an interesting move from a judicial court to an appellate court. A lot of time spent in Baton Rouge, as you said, that's where the appellate court is. So want to get in touch a little bit with your community participation. That was something we also talked about before we sat down. You know, and, and you listed off quite a few, uh, quite a few endeavors, uh, you know, everything from Chamber of Commerce to being a Little League coach. Uh, so from your perspective, uh, just a quick list of a lot of things that you've done, but more so want to hear why you've done them. You know, why are those things important to you in terms of being a participating member of your community? I like being involved in my community. I like the participation. I like to make the community better. I was president of the Chamber of Commerce. The same year I was president of the Chamber of Commerce, we developed a leadership program in our Chamber of Commerce. It was the first leadership program on the North Shore. Uh, I was named the Citizen of the Year by the Elks Club that year because of my activities. I was, I was a Little League coach. I had a lot of things going on that year that I was president of the Chamber of Commerce, but I enjoyed that activity. I love being a Little League coach. That's like the, the, probably the most fun uh, it, you can have when you're watching a bunch of T-ballers uh, tea trying to play baseball, it, it's just, it's so entertaining watching them uh, run or not paying attention, picking flowers. But, it, you know, it's, it's, it's just good times. Um, I've also was president of the Ch uh, Kiwanis Club, and I worked as, with a key club at Salmon High School for many years. Um, so I, I, I do care about my community, and I like being involved. Currently, I'm involved with what we call a sobriety court at the 22nd JDC. I've been doing that for the last eight years. That's a little more intense because, of course, those are people that have had substance abuse problems, got multiple DWIs, and if they weren't a participant in my sobriety court, then they would have to go to prison. So we've been keeping those folks from going to prison under home incarceration, going through treatment, going through AA meetings, and uh, and dealing with all the other requirements of probation. In fact, they have to wear a Scram X device to make sure that they are not uh, uh, drinking during this period of time. So when you're talking about going into the appellate court, you know, there's a, a whole umbrella of courts that you will be, you know, overseeing, especially if, if you receive an appeal or just have to, you know, check on how a certain proceeding went. The interesting thing that I'm hearing from this side of the table is that there's a there's a well-rounded background, you know, which tell us why, in your opinion, you would believe that somebody who has uh, not only been a judge, uh, of course, that's prior requirement, but been a judge, also been somebody who has tried to help people stay out of, uh, you know, through that sobriety court, stay out of jail, trying to help move them through, and also been a participant in your community. How does that develop you as a well-rounded person to work through these appeals as they come to you? 
Well, I, I, again, I have the, the legal experience to, to review the cases that come before me, but I also have uh, the experience of, of knowing what people's issues are and have some compassion, even though I might not be able to, to always help them in these situations uh, because I have to follow the law. So, yes, I'm, uh, it, it's a difficult balancing uh, task sometimes, but you, also, you have to make sure no matter what you do, even though you have, might have a personal feeling to do something else, you follow the law in making your decision. Last question is we're, we're moving forward into having, you know, gotten to know you a little bit, want to barrel down on a, on a, on a question that might be, you know, might take you a second as you're moving into this appellate court, if, if you are elected, what do you, from your perspective, having been on the bench at a judicial court or a, a district court, what do you view as the biggest challenge that you would face? On the appellate court? There, the First Circuit hears all of the cases that come out of East Baton Rouge. So there are a lot of cases against the state of Louisiana, very difficult issues that we have to consider and make the right decision uh, for the state of Louisiana and the people of the state of Louisiana. So the most difficult challenge to me is to make sure that we get it right, that we see those cases we get them right and we make sure the law is correct and it doesn't affect people adversely more so than what the law would provide for. Again, we have been joined by Judge Rick Schwartz. He's running for the First Circuit Court of Appeal. Uh, we appreciate you joining us today, sir. Is there anything else you'd like to say uh, that you feel like we haven't had a chance to touch on uh, during this time? Just that the election is July 11th. Early voting will be from June 20th through July 4th. Please look at the candidates. Go vote. I would appreciate your vote, and thank you for having me on. Yes, sir. Thank you. Again, uh, Judge Rick Schwartz, uh, touting a lot of judicial experience, uh, 22nd Judicial Court Judge, 2009 to the present, uh, also participating in a uh, DWI and sobriety court program, trying to help those folks get back on their feet, also a big community member. Uh, please, we do ask you to go to our website. We do have uh, Judge Schwartz's announcement up. It is at www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash breaking news. You can check it out there. It is free. I know a lot of you people like to hear that. Uh, so we want to make sure that you can get to know your candidates as they are running to represent you. Also want to remind folks, we uh, had a little conversation beforehand. There is, it's an interesting uh, time during COVID-19, especially to be as part of an election there will be extra time, an extra week of early voting. Uh, also, you might qualify for some absentee ballots uh, if you've been sick or are sick at the time. Uh, so please remember to check with the Secretary of State or your local registrar of voters. Sir, thank you one more time. We do appreciate it. It was, a, it was a enjoyable to get to know you. And uh, good luck on the campaign trail. Thank you.